Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about a study. It's a couple of years old, um, but the information is really fascinating. So it came from the uh, Journal of Parental and Enteral Nutrition. Uh, the title is a mouthful, so I'm going to look down and read it for you. So it's called Gut Microbiota, Intestinal Permeability, Obesity-Induced Inflammation, and Liver Injury. Or, as I like to say, if you want to lose weight, it's all in the bugs. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? Your um, microbiota is, you've heard of it more uh, in your gut as your, your population of probiotics. So when the Human Genome Project um, finally completed several years ago, we were rather dismayed to discover that humans had about 23,000 genes and the earthworm, as an example, had 90,000 genes. So after asking the people that worked so hard on the Human Genome Project, were they absolutely sure this was correct? And they were. Uh, we were kind of back to square one trying to figure out you know, I mean, obviously the, the earthworm is not a sophisticated animal, yet it has all, you know, has more than, you know, quadruple the number of genes we have. So how did that make sense? Um, what we discovered is that this microbiota, or this population, which has 10 times the number of cells that you have in your body, we have 10 trillion cells, we have 100 trillion organisms that make up uh, that, that microbiota or microbiome as it's called. Uh, not only does it have 10 times the number of cells but, or organisms, but it has 100 times the number of genes. So 23,000 genes versus 2 million plus genes. So um, this is a very big difference obviously and we realize it's that interplay between our genes and this this host that we have, uh, we are hosting this other population. It's the interplay of those genes that gives the human the sophistication and ability to do what we do, et cetera, as opposed to the poor little earthworm. Um, and the chimpanzee, for that matter, um, has very, very similar number of genes to us, but you don't see it reading the, nor the morning newspaper, as uh, one of my favorite researchers likes to say. So back to the study, what they looked at was the fact that this microbiome could almost be another organ, as far as humans are concerned. And it's very, very affiliated with uh, how we absorb nutrition, how we burn calories, etc. So when, it, when it's in a nice, balanced state, and robust, we are thereby healthier. When it is not in a, in a good state and it has a more unhealthy balance, we're more likely to gain weight, we're more likely to have high cholesterol, high triglycerides, uh, be uh, insulin resistant, all, and, and higher inflammation, all these things leading to the degenerative diseases we're trying to avoid in this country. So they did a lot of animal studies and, um, and showed that actually with, with mice and humans, uh, this microbiota, you, you could induce from humans to mice and see similar results, even though the mice themselves uh, have, have a different uh, population. So uh, you, you could take perfectly healthy mice and then take a fat human's microbiota strains, actually inject it into the mice, and these mice on the exact same diet would become obese within days, a very, very fast change. So what it does show is that when a human gets on a bad diet, so say you're one of these people who tries to be really good Monday through Friday, and then on the weekend you go, blah, you know, I can do whatever I want. Those two days are, are enough to really change your microbiota and not only cause you to maybe gain some weight, but put you on this path toward uh, toward disease, and degenerative disease in particular. So not the best course of action. They said that, these researchers said that um, as far as what you get genetically, that accounts for 12% of your, your microbiome, um, but what you eat, your diet, accounts for 57%. And the biggest uh, bad guys they found dietarily were a high fat diet and a high fructose diet. Uh, so very common in, in our Western or American diet, uh, but those were, were the most deleterious as far as uh, they found. So um, what do we need to do here? 
obviously a high fat diet is, is very prevalent, but uh, getting off dairy products, reducing your intake of um, processed foods and fast foods, reducing your uh, saturated fats as far as meat, meat content is concerned, like beef, uh, making those changes would definitely lower your fat. Now, uh, avoiding a high fat diet doesn't mean you have to have a low fat diet either. It just means you don't want excessive fat and obviously excessive inflammatory fat. So enjoying your olives and your coconut oil and your avocados and your fresh nuts and seeds are of course fine and very, very healthy. So we're not saying no fat, we're just not saying high bad fat. As far as fructose, uh, we don't want any fructose in our diet as far as, uh, now there's fructose in fruit, so I'm not talking about that, but high fructose corn sweeteners uh, and the like, we definitely want a, a zero tolerance policy of those. Uh, the other thing you can do is, is get, if you can, there's a great lab test that we use here that you can look at uh, the balance of your microbiome and, and what sort of uh, good bacteria versus bad and then we can get you on a probiotic that suits you the best. There's a lot of different probiotics. Certainly the presence of any uh, infections in the gut can really offset the microbiome and that's another thing that we, we can look for. Uh, they also felt, felt that a high fat diet increased your intestinal permeability or leaky gut. So that as we know is something also caused by uh, gluten and so if you have this high fat bad diet and you're more intestinal uh, you increase your intestinal permeability or leaky gut you're also aggravating the effects of gluten if you're gluten intolerant so kind of comes full circle that way but if but if somebody's telling you wow calories in calories out doesn't matter how much um, or, or the quality just just, you know, if you want to lose weight, reduce your calories. That's not proving to be true. Um, we've kind of known that for a long time, but this study definitely corroborates it. It's the quality of what you're putting in and not just the quantity. It really is the nature of, of the food. Is it real food? Is it really communicating and supporting that important microbiota or is it inflaming it and putting a lot of stress on it? And so there's an answer to our obesity and degenerative disease problem in a big way. And I hope you found this informative. Please uh, share the information with others and uh, send in your questions and comments. I always love to hear from you. Until next time, I wish you very good health.